Well, welcome back, Confirmation Class. Last week, I was cooking, Pastor Cooking Coglin in the kitchen of Redeemer. And this week, I'm Pastor Construction Coglin, and I'm here in the janitor's, uh, our custodian office here at Redeemer. And I'm just realizing I've used alliteration without even planning it. Cooking Coglin, Construction Coglin. Last week we talked about what is it, and we used that cooking analogy in cookies. You can't find or see or taste everything in there, but you have a recipe and you trust who tells you it's in there. Well, we can't find, taste, or see the body and blood of Jesus in, with, and under the bread and wine, but we trust the word and promises of Jesus. We trust him and we have our recipe. We have God's word. This week, though, I'm coming to you from the custodian office because, hey, I don't know about you, but Redeemer's an awesome church, but you know what? It's not, not always that awesome. There's projects that need to be done. There's things that need to get fixed. There's stuff that breaks down, and we have a custodian and awesome trustees to take care of this imperfect building. Well, guess what? You are an imperfect building. And we're here as Construction Coglin today because God is working on you and he's working on me. I got this passage I want to share it for you uh, from 1 Peter chapter 2. It says, as you come to him, the living stone, so Jesus, the living stone, the precious stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, so you are precious to him you also like living stones are being built up into a spiritual house scripture loves to use this analogy of us being built up that we are a, a work in progress and that god through his spirit is working on us to build us and to make us who he created us to be this is an important lesson and I want my construction hat and my construction shirt and construction coglin here today because this is a good idea for us as we think about communion. The second question, well, why should I even take it? And this is a good question because during this pandemic season, it's been really easy to not take it. And some people haven't taken it in a long time. And it causes all of us to ask the question, communion, why is it so important to receive this? So down here, I have a, a friend of mine, and you guys might have not noticed this yet, uh, because I probably haven't come down to your confirmation class with this yet. But my friend is this guy right here. All right, this is, this is this good old dump truck, awesome on a construction site, bringing the right materials in to build it up. And this dump truck is my friend because this is what I call the MOG truck. And MOG truck stands for means of grace. And the means of grace are simple. I have a cross back there on, on our workbench. And the question is, how does this action that happened 2000, over 2,000 years ago, how does what Jesus won on this cross get delivered directly to you? And that's where the mob truck comes in. The mob truck, the means of grace truck, is the, the truck that receives all the things that Jesus won through the Holy Spirit, comes, enters your life, and dumps out his gifts. And there's three ways that we think of this mod truck, the means of grace. There's three of them. Can you name them? The first one, and I've been holding it, the first one is God's word, isn't it? That God's word is a way that God takes the grace, the love, the forgiveness, the hope, the joy, the peace, the everlasting life that he's won and dumps it into your life. Another one happened to many of us when we were really little. Baptism. Baptism is another way that God takes what was won for us on the cross through his spirit and come and delivers it into your life. And guess what? The third one is what we're talking about today, isn't it? 
communion, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, is when God backs up to that to that cross with this Holy Spirit and comes and enters your life in a tangible way that you can see and that you can taste and doesn't just fill you because you're hungry, but fills you with what you need for him as he's building you up. He literally comes and dumps the gifts that was won on the cross into your life. The mod truck is what we need. And it delivers the basic, but awesome, powerful, wonderful materials that we need to be built up in our faith. And today we're focusing on just one of those, on communion. So as we get ready for that, I think it's important for us to just ask a question then. And the question is simple. On your sheets here, if you got it, you have our, we have our memory verse of the day. The memory verse is uh, Acts chapter 2, talking about the early church and what they were up to. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. They devoted themselves to these things. And we want to follow in those footsteps. And as we ask the question, why do we take communion? The basic thing, you see the first two lessons on here from Luke chapter 22 and from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. These are just sharing the words that Jesus, that Jesus says that he encourages us, that he commands us to do this. And if Jesus tells it to us it's important, we should probably listen. But we don't assume we know why. Why does God command us to do things? This is an important question. And as we get ready to answer it, I just want to share a verse for you from Genesis chapter 3. This is in the garden, that perfect garden, and Satan comes to tempt Adam and Eve and listen to the temptation he gives them. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden or you shouldn't touch it or you will die. You surely won't die, the serpent said, for God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. What's the first temptation of Satan? He comes and he says, doubt God's word. And not just that, he says, you know what? If you follow this God guy, yeah, he's kind of letting you down. He's kind of a drag. He's actually holding you back. It's not, it's not actually going to be the best life. You're actually going to miss something super important. So don't listen to what he said. Go and try it. It will be that much better for you. And we go, isn't that exactly what he does for us? Man, being a Christian is boring. Oh, you're following that? You're missing out on the best life. Everybody else is having so much more fun. Do you really want to listen to that? Because if you follow that, well, ha, huh, good luck. It's the same temptation, which makes the question super important. Why does God command us to do things? God commands us to do things because he loves us and he knows what's best for us. God commands you as part of you being built up in your faith, as a part of realizing that you haven't arrived and you are still being built up and you still need him working on you and you still need that mob truck. God, out of a love and command for you, says, receive communion. This is actually what's best for you and the thing you desperately need. So why take it? Well, the first answer is God commands us to. And he tells us to do what's best for us because he knows best, because he loves us. He loves us so much that he sent his son to that cross. That's who I want to listen to. 
On your sheet though, you have a couple pictures and we're gonna go through each of these just as a another good little reminder of why should we be taking this in the first place. So the first one is Jesus at the well. He's at the well with, with the Samaritan woman. We're not looking specifically at that story, but that story gets to uh, an idea of why we take this. If you look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 28, <clears throat> It says this, Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Why do we take this? Because you and I are sinners. And we want to fill our life with his forgiveness. And we need the forgiveness that Jesus won for us on the cross. And you know, and because we need it so much and our need for it is so great, we should look for it and long for it in any and every place he offers it. Why take communion? Because it brings the forgiveness in your life that you desperately need. And this forgiveness is a foundational building block as God builds us up. The next one I want to look at, if you go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and look at verses 24 and 25. So 24, and when he said this, he gave thanks, he broke it. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do it whenever you drink of it in a remembrance of me. Is our meal a meal of remembrance? Yeah, it is. A good and important way to do this is you can't have blood without sacrifice. And we should at all times and in all places remind ourselves of the sacrifice of our Savior and just what he's done for us on the cross. Another reason to do it, it's like that rear view mirror that puts up in your life. So as you're traveling along life, it keeps the cross in the background so you see it at all times and you remember what he has done. If you go just a few verses now later, uh, verse 26, same chapter, it says this. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. There's this picture in heaven of this wonderful and final meal, that this heavenly banquet that we have. And as we come to the Lord's table and as we receive the Lord's supper, not only does it remind us of the cross, but it focuses us forward as we're being built up in this life to the one thing we're all waiting for. The one thing we're longing for. And what's that? Eternal life. The day when you see Jesus. The day when we gather in that heavenly kingdom. And we have that heavenly banquet. And this meal is a foretaste of that awesome feast to come. So communion, why take it? Because we need a reminder every day. This broken world isn't what's most important. This is not the end. But we are looking forward to something so much better. And if you go just one chapter back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we're going to look at verse 17. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we are a participate in one loaf. What's a good reason to take communion? Communion is a way that God unites us and brings us back together because we do have a lot of differences. And yes, we do get in arguments with each other. And yes, our relationships with each other aren't perfect and we can't rely on ourselves to build this unity in the body of Christ. But this one bread, this one loaf is a way that he brings us together as one body and unites us together in something important. And this unity is super important throughout scripture. Check out Ephesians 4 as Jesus is building us up to be the body of Christ. These are just a few reasons of why communion is important. 
I encourage you now as a family, as you close this video, uh, to think through the communion blessing. And I'll, I'll say it once so you, to help you in case you can't fill in these blanks. But a reason we take it, the blessing says why. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you, build you up, strengthen you, and encourage you in body and in soul until life everlasting. Take some time. Make sure you got this thing filled out. Take the family reflection class, the questions on the backside. Fill those out. Send those to me. Construction Coglin is here to remind you. We take communion because it's an important way that God is delivering what we need into our lives so he can build us up in Christ. Amen.